Welcome to another installment of the video series Why do so many people play this riff wrong? Where we try to meticulously analyze a classic riff and learn how to execute it as correctly as possible. Not because we have to, but because we can. I think it's fun and it can teach you a thing or two about guitar. Here's episode 5 and today we're taking a look at a tune that changed my guitar playing. A song that left me in awe the first time I heard it. A guitar piece that sounds so inspiring and genuine by a guitarist has been a major influence for many guitar players across the globe. John Frusciante. And the song is Under the Bridge. This is a video about how John turned a run-of-the-mill chord progression into one of the most memorable guitar parts ever recorded. But hold on a second. This isn't working. So, I wanted to record this video under a bridge, but it turns out cars and trucks make quite some noise when they drive by. So maybe it's easier if you can understand and hear what I'm saying and what I'm playing. So let's do it in the studio. Let's go. So of course there is this cool intro with two arpeggiated chords, the D and the F sharp. But it's a bit of a loose segment and that isn't the part I wanted to discuss in this video. So let's jump immediately to the verse. The verse is in the key of E major and it starts out with the one chord, the E, played over here. Seventh position on the A string, the lazy E chord like this. After this we go to the B major, but the way John plays all the following chords in this verse is in a second inversion. This means the fifth of the chord is the lowest sounding note. Like this, 9, 9 on A and D, 8 on G and 7 on B. So this is your typical bar chord with a root on the sixth string, but it just doesn't play that sixth string. It has a certain sound to it. It sounds a bit growly and earthy to me. The chord is what we call a closed voicing if you play it like this. All the intervals of the chord are as close together as possible. Anyway, this is how it sounds. It results in all the chords being played on the middle four strings. And there's one little embellishment in there where he slides from that B chord to the C sharp minor chord on the A and the D string, followed by the rest of the chord like this. So you play the B, now we simply slide up with the ring finger and pinky, two frets up, and now you can just bar your index finger on the G and the B string, and you got the C sharp minor. Now we lower to the G sharp minor, over here, fret six and four, to A major, over here, seven, seven, six, five. So the way this is played is very lazy. It's a lazy way of fretting the chords, but often playing lazy yields in fluent sounding result. You see, if you move as little as possible, that means the technique is probably quite good and efficient. Minimize the effort and maximize the results. I personally like the way of playing and thinking like this. If, if it looks easy, you're probably doing something right. So back to the verse. Verse number one, it ends with an E major seven chord which gives you a feeling of suspense. Frusciante borrowed that chord supposedly from a song called Rip Off by T-Rex and he liked that major seven sound It's in the song, it's a C major seven. But he used that same chord in this piece, transposed to E, E major seven. This chord sounds a little more rich and colorful than the other chords from the verses and it makes a good dividing line between the separate parts. The drums start playing. It's surely going somewhere. Yes it is. To verse number two, which just uses the same chords, but John takes it to a whole other level. The style of playing he uses in this verse is highly influenced by Jimi Hendrix, of course. He heard Little Wing the first time and he decided nobody could possibly know how to play this song. Impossible to play, you know. Well obviously he got to figure out, because what he's playing in this verse has a lot of similarities with that song. And he thinks about it in three layers, three different parts. There's the chords being played, E, B, C sharp minor, C sharp minor and A. And then there's a sort of a lead part on top of it. Mm. 
And on top of that lead part is those extra strings of the chord again, making it sound like three guitars in one. So what's happening? Let's break it down. First we play the chords, E and B, and over here it's a little bit of a syncopation going on. The accents go from the down strum to the up strum, alternating between on the beats to the off beats. So the way I think of it is down, up, down, up, up. The down strums are on the beats and the, uh, uh, the up strums are on the off beats. So it's E, E, B, B, B. And it's E is down, up, and on the B it's down, up, up. And he's also dividing the chords into two parts, the lower registers and the higher registers. Where usually the down strum plays the lower part, and the up strum plays the higher accents. So this happens more easily if you make your strumming motion not too big, like Frusciante does. Again, he's pretty lazy, so the strumming hand makes a very gentle and minimized motion, which makes it easier to divide the chords into highs and lows, but maybe even more important, it also makes it way easier to add some noodles in between the chords. For instance, that B chord, because that's where he's going to after the E, he starts to add this little embellishment to the chord, um, like this. He adds the 4 to the chord, basically very quickly from a B to a B sus 4 and back to B, with that pinky. I suggest you do it with your pinky. You can do it with your ring finger, but I use my pinky, because you can leave your fingers on the chord. Um, so it's a very quick legato hammer-on on the G string from frets 8 to 9. And again, think lazy. The less movement, the easier and the better it will sound. Keep the rest of the chord fretted down, because that's where the magic lies. When you play that little lick, you don't want it to be too precise and too neat. The picking hand is playing quite rough, so just hitting a few strings, and your fretting hand is the one that makes um, you hear the notes that you want to hear. You can sing aloud the one you need. Playing the B chord like this, and just hitting a few strings in the middle somewhere, and then doing a hammer on with the pinky on the fret. 8 to 9, and then pull off again. So B, B sus 4, B major. That's it. Hammer on, pull off, back to 9 on the D string, and then again an accent on the upper register of the chord. So if you sing aloud the melody, it sounds like this. Hammer on, pull off, pinky to 9 on D again, and then the G string again. But in the chord it sounds a little less pronounced like this, a little more rough. And at this point you could use your thumb to play the root notes in the bass, but you surely don't have to. When I listen closely to the recordings, it sometimes sounds like it's coming a little bit through, but the main focus is still on those middle four strings. I've seen videos of him playing it where he's more emphasizing the low E string with the thumb. So I don't know, just do whatever feels good to you. Moving on, the next chord is the C sharp minor. And he slides up to that chord again with a lovely rhythmic figure like this. So, what's happening? He's clearly differentiating the higher and the lower registers of that C sharp minor chord. And this line sounds quite jumpy, but still very fluidly, because it's all played so legato y and smoothly. Um, everything follows right after each other, and that's awesome. The way to make it sound good is to pull the fingers off the strings before you go to the next bit. You slide with a ring finger and a pinky from 9 to 11. A and the D string, and then you bar your index finger on the G and the B, and if you play those two strings, you remove the ring and the pinky from the A and the D. And then you do that two times. That's it. So that's pretty cool, and in combination with that B chord, it's a pretty big embellishment of those two chords, and it sounds very crowded by itself. But 
because we're staying very close to the chord themselves, it's, it, it, it doesn't sound too out there. It's not fighting for attention with the vocal line from Anthony. They go together in perfect harmony. So after that G C sharp minor, we go back to G sharp minor all the way to here, six, six, four, four, middle four strings. But just as a passing chord to A. Nothing fancy. But on that A chord, we do a very cool major pentatonic lick on the first string again, very fast and legato-y. So it's pretty easy, you play the middle four strings and then the pinky is briefly adding that ninth of the major chord to it. So the ninth A major scale up, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, and then the ninth is B again, just a major scale up. So um, like this, you do a hammer on, So on the first string, hammer on from 5 to 7 and a pull off again, but then you play the B string. And again, don't make it too neat and too pretty, it's a bit rough. You can just hit a few strings, mm, it sounds cool. So. Very sweet. And stringing all of this together played slowly. It sounds something like this. The second time round, you play like this. So just from C sharp to A, and then you play the top three strings down. And in tempo it sounds like this. And that's basically how you play the verses from this classic Under the Bridge. The chorus is just an F sharp minor, an E and a B. And the end has some pretty sweet score as well, but in my opinion the verses are the biggest struggle for most people learning this song. So with these tips and tricks I'm sure you will be able to nail it. And again copying it one on one isn't really necessary, especially when you cover a song it's not. Make it your own if you want. I'm not an advocate for note for note covering, but for educational purposes it might be a smart thing to take a closer look at your favorites when you try to learn them. Have a wonderful day everyone. Make sure to very gently hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you aren't and please hit that notification bell because that's very important for the channel to survive and to stay healthy. Thank you so much. Cheers.